Damn, he's a fucking deer. Casually just go on. Baguette. French eat. baguette. Hey everyone, currently in the car with the bestie Tammy and we are on our way to Fort Townsend. I'm so excited. Okay, your bread is just like, <laughs> sorry, I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm so excited because I've always wanted to go here and it's kind of a shame because Tammy and I have lived here for over a decade and we realized that we haven't been to a lot of places in Washington. Like we've never been to Olympic National Park and that was the original plan, but due to some road closures, we've decided to go to Port Townsend instead. We're mainly going because it looks really cute. Um, I think I read about it before, like it was supposed to be the original Seattle and there are a lot of beautiful like Victorian buildings. So we're just going for a quick day trip, chill in some cafes, hang out. Are you excited? Mm -hmm. How's the bread? It's dry, but it's good. <laughs> right now we're in line to get some tickets at a toll booth. We're taking the ferry from Edmonds to Kingston, but you guys can also take the Seattle ferry to Kingston based on where you are. And then we're gonna drive all the way up to Port Townsend. And I'm so excited. You're welcome. Lane one, they said. Alrighty. The minute the sun came out, Tammy and I were both so glad that we had decided to embark on this one-day adventure to Port Townsend. It had been so long since I've taken a Washington ferry, and there are a lot of different islands to explore along the state's coast. I first heard about Port Townsend in a suitcase magazine article that mentioned the town's rich history and how it had dreams of becoming the next New York of the West Coast before all railroads and travel eventually led to the city of Seattle instead. We didn't plan to visit the town until the day before, so we were really excited to see what the town had to offer. So we've already arrived at our first stop, which is at Kingston. That was quicker than I expected. It could take us, what, 25? 25 minutes. 25 minutes, maybe. And the whole time I was just getting flashbacks from like going on a ferry in Greece because it feels pretty similar. We're basically taking a ferry to an island minus all of the chaos that you get at like a Greece ferry terminal. So this was a more laid back version and I really liked it. I'm also really happy that the sun is out kind of. So it's a perfect day to go hop on an island. And now we're just waiting to get off before we drive all the way to Port Townsend, which is going to take about 50 minutes or so. After landing in Kingston, we decided to stop by this popular crêperie right off the road of Kingston's ferry terminal. We got a little lost, we had to circle back towards the beach, and there it was. In Paris, summer of 1988, near Metro Stop Concorde, the US ambassador had invited some foreign diplomats, a few famous Hollywood actors, and an American drummer, Paul Pluska, to an evening party at his expansive back lawn. After taking a bite into his savory crepe, an idea was born. Fascinated, he spent the next eight years striking up conversations with crepe chefs during his travels through Europe. In 1999, he and his wife Heather shipped two 45-pound crepe makers in France to Italy where he was stationed, and the crepe makers eventually came back to the U.S. They started selling the traditional style crepes of northern France at the Kingston Farmer's Market, and its popularity led to the opening of what is now the Jeanne des Crepes shop. Fun fact, one of the girls there told us that they used to send the workers on a two-week-long crepe school in Paris, but that had since been discontinued because the girls would quit after their trip. But these crepes were delicious. The dark chocolate and strawberries. Ooh, classic. Mm. 
The drive to Port Townsend from Kingston took about 50 minutes. Located on the peninsula in Jefferson County, Port Townsend is known for its natural scenery, the many Victorian buildings remaining from its late 19th century, music festivals, and for its maritime activities along the water. Upon arriving, the town immediately felt artsy and a little eclectic. We also happened to arrive on a Saturday, where the Port Townsend Farmer's Market is open every week from 10 to 2 p.m. Just arrived at Port Townsend and it looks so cute. Oh my gosh, it is so bright. We're currently walking to the farmer's market. We're walking from uptown, which is where a lot of the old Victorian houses are. Where there's like people next to me right now. Hey, you. I just picked your name on the coffee cup. But it's of luck to catch us messed up and game. You cap to me. Just went to the farmer's market, got some things, got some lip balm, I got like a little incense and some lavender honey. Talked to some interesting people. We're all good vibes. And now we are walking to the Starrett House. I think that's what it's called, but it's in old Victorian style hotel that's still running today and I'm really excited it looks really beautiful I'm hoping that we can go inside and check in the interior as well how are you feeling so far good That Victorian building was beautiful, but right now we're going to the Hastings house and I see it from a distance right now and it looks like something that I've never seen before. Wow. Port Townsend streets are lined with beautiful Victorian style buildings. Many of them are very well preserved and in the 1970s, the historic waterfront and the residential area above downtown were both placed on the National Register of Historic Places. We walked around this museum in the beautiful 1890 Hastings building, walked through some vintage shops, and then glanced back at the Hastings building because, well, look at that. We stopped into a few more shops, but then decided to visit Port Townsend Parks before it got too dark out, which in Washington means like before 4 p.m. We are currently at Fort Warden State Park right now, and we just saw a deer. We're gonna go back to the shops before the sun went down. We wanted to visit the state parks first. Anyways, on the way to the car, there was a deer just staring at me in the middle of a sidewalk. And I looked closer to Seattle, so that's not something that you see very often. Apparently, we were talking to one of the girls there, and she said that it's like a casual thing, like there's deer everywhere. And after just arriving at the state park, I just saw like 10 other deer, so. Yeah. They're so cute. They're very cute. Just got a Discover Pass on one of the booths here. A day pass was $10 and an annual pass was $30. And now we're just sitting and having our mini lunch. Can we brought some snacks? My hair is a mess right now. It's like frozen bird poop. Oh, that's gross. But we brought eggs and bread. Eggs and bread. <laughs> yeah, we didn't get a chance to stop by the cafe earlier, but we're gonna do that once we get back. But we're just starving in the meantime, so this is this is the situation. How did I break this? A century ago, Fort Warden Historic State Park was home to about a thousand troops and officers to defend the Puget Sound from potential enemy invaders. Today, you can find hidden gun emplacements and Victorian era officers' homes. The park hosts workshops, festivals, and there are even places that you and your family can stay in for the holidays. Just left the state park. It was nice. I think it's somewhere where you would kind of have to know the history of the base camp, but we did get to see a lot of deer 
and yeah I don't think paying ten dollars just to basically park that was worth it because we ended up <laughs> driving around because we're a little bit short on time before the sun goes down and right now we are on our way to Simoka Park um, which is supposed to be another beautiful little park I guess like it's normal for deer to pee everywhere here I just saw one run into a backyard pretty fascinating Jackson Street Tetsumoka Park is another peaceful place to seek some nature. The park is named after the Native American chief of the Klalam tribe. The story is quite sad as many Native Americans fell prey to diseases brought by the white settlers and they were then ousted out of their homes. They called their spot Katai before it became Port Townsend and I think it's important to remember these events as part of the town's history. We walked around here for about 30 minutes and Tammy had a lot of fun finding these hidden stones with quotes scattered all around the park because we're children. After that, we drove back downtown to finish exploring the myriad of interesting and unique shops. I want to go to that store. <gasps> wow. situated in the downstairs of another store and we found some really cool stuff. Oh my god, I'm so glad I tried on this one. Tammy just got a hat, show me. Super cute. We got some really cute stuff at the vintage store that I'll show you guys later. Ooh, what is that? But now we're just scrolling around. since we didn't have a full lunch, we decided to treat ourselves to some nice Thai food for dinner at Kular. I was a little bit skeptical because we were no longer in the more diverse city of Seattle, but I was pleasantly surprised. The food here was delicious. Just finished our dinner and my camera's dying, so I think I'm gonna end the talking portion of the vlog here, but overall, what'd you think of the trip? It was super fun. We got a lot of cool stuff. We ate really good food. Yeah, it was super, super fun. And now we're on the way to the ferry terminal at Kingston. I'm so glad that we came here. And today was just a reminder that you should not take your surroundings for granted, which is definitely what I've done for over a decade now in the suburbs of Seattle. So I'm definitely going to try to make the effort to explore more parks and things. Like I haven't even been to Olympic National Park yet and people from all over the states like come here and see it. So. East Sims Way. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe for more videos and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out. Bye.